Thanks very much. Now, I'd like to introduce my zany partner. Of course, he doesn't have any good looks, but he doesn't mind. He doesn't have any brains, either. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a set. Jerry Lewis! <laughs> What's with this peculiar way of speaking? Guess what happened to me? Okay, I give up. What happened to you? <laughs> no, Jerry, when you come to the end of a sentence like that, you're supposed to drop your inflection. What? And have everybody see my underwear? Oh. <laughs> no, Jerry, forget your underwear. That would be even worse. <laughs> Look, Jerry, when you come to the end of a sentence, your voice is supposed to drop. Okay, Ding. Guess what happened to me? <laughs> no, please, Jerry. When you talk, there are statements and there are questions. Now, at the end of a statement, you put a period. You know what a period is? Oh, sure. That's a pimple made out of ink. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, Jerry. I'm talking about punctuation. Do you know what punctuation is? Oh, and DDD, I do. <laughs> punctuation is a science of facilitating the interpretation of a sentence or any group of sentences in a paragraph by way of sundry... Variegated markings. Sherry, how did you know that? One of our writers has a dictionary. Which one? The one that can read. Oh. I'll explain punctuation further. Now, take this, Hens. I'm going to Europe to entertain this summer. I'm going with you. No, Jerry, no, no. I'm only trying to explain inflections. When I say I'm going to Europe this summer... I'm taking an example. I'm taking a boat. No. <laughs> no, no. You go your way and I'll go mine. All right, Jer, we'll both go by boat. We're both going by boat? Now you got it. You asked a question and your inflection went up. Question up, statement down. Oh, question up, statement down. Question up, statement down. That's right. Up, down. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Ha, ha, ding. What, Jer? I'm nauseous. <laughs> This whole thing is your fault. Now, tell me, Jerry, what happened to you? I mean, what happened to you? I'm glad you asked that, Dean. It was terrible. It was. It, it was just one of those days when everything seems to go wrong. You know how those days do pop up. Yeah. <laughs> I came back late last night and I called the police. Call the police? Why? I thought I was kidnapped. How can a person think he's kidnapped? I looked at my bed and I wasn't there. <laughs> Naturally, Jerry, nobody can be there. The bed was empty. Oh, no, Dean, it was half empty. Half empty? It couldn't be half empty. All right, it was half full. <laughs> half full of what? My brother, Biney. He was at a party all night and he was drinking. And he wound up sleeping in your bed? Every time Bernie gets drunk, he thinks he's me. Why didn't you wake Bernie up and tell him that he wasn't you? I did. I said, Bernie, you are not me. You are not me. What happened? He talked me out of it. <laughs> and that's not all, Deanie. Just when I dropped off to sleep, I was awakened by the dog barking. What was bothering the dog? She was having kittens. <laughs> the dog was having kittens? She doesn't know she's a dog. She thinks she's a cat. How could a dog think she's a cat? Bernie talked her into it. Oh. She wants me for her garden. Our guest star wants you for her garden? Yeah, as soon as she saw me, she turned to her friend and said, Get a load of that. <laughs> you should be flattered that our guest noticed you at all. You know, she's a very famous Academy Award winner. An Academy Award winner? Gracious, that's positively sterling. Yeah, Jerry, three years ago at the Academy Awards, she got an Oscar. She was sure surprised. Why did she expect the girl? <laughs> well, you don't understand, Jerry. For the past three years, she's kept her Oscar on the mantelpiece. On the mantelpiece? <laughs> she can't afford a crib. <laughs> Look, Jerry, she got this for a picture. Did you ever see The Razor's Edge? Only when I shave. <laughs> Jay, I hope you don't act so stupid after I introduce her. Ladies and gentlemen, I guess it's no longer any secret who our guest is. So I know you'll be happy to meet and greet the lovely and charming Miss Ann Baxter. Well, welcome. 
welcome, Annie. Thank you, Dean. I'm certainly glad you could make it tonight. Well, I almost didn't. I had a hard time getting a sitter for my child. Naturally, who wants to sit up there on a mantelpiece? <laughs> Dean, this thing shouldn't be let loose. It should live in a cage. <laughs> Miss Baxter? <laughs> I'll have you know that I, Jerry Lewis, star of stage, screen, radio, and television, have a large enough income to afford the finest home in Beverly Hills. Oh, that, that's true, Jerry. So how come I live in a cage? <laughs> Jerry, that outburst amazed me. Why, it wouldn't surprise me if you had the makings of a dramatic actor. It would amaze me. To be a really fine dramatic actor, you must be able to control your emotions, even though you've loved and lost. <laughs> Well, I've loved and lost, and look at me. I am looking, and I see why you lost. <laughs> Miss Baxter? I know. <laughs> Miss Baxter, I may not be dashing or chivalrous, suave or debonair, cultured or glum, but I have one thing that Tyrone Powell hasn't got. What's that? A brother who thinks he's me. <laughs> uh, my partner's not well at all tonight. Oh, I- I'm sorry I insulted you, Jerry. I'd do anything in the world to make it up to you. Anything, Miss Baxter? Yes. Anything. Miss Baxter. <laughs> Anne. Yes. Would a bag of peanut brittle be asking too much? <laughs> oh, Jerry. Oh, Dean, doesn't Jerry know anything about life? He doesn't even suspect anything. <laughs> I do about acting, it is a well-known fact among very few people that because of my dramatic ability, I was once offered a part in High Noon. Why didn't you take it? I don't get up that early. (laughs) 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 Jerry, what Annie has been trying to say is that you can't be a dramatic actor unless you've suffered. I've suffered. Oh, how I've suffered. Wow, how I've suffered. Gosh, oh, gee whiz, how I've suffered. My stars, I've suffered. (laughs) Suffer, 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 suffer. That's me all suffering. All right, so you suffered, you suffered. But that isn't all you need to become a dramatic success. That's so true. You need Broadway experience. Oh, the theater. Oh, I miss it. I'm here in Hollywood, but I... I left part of me on Broadway. But you brought the ham with you, didn't you? <laughs> Jerry, what Ann is trying to say is that it's not only dramatic ability that makes a star, it's the experience and the part, too. Oh, yes. Yes, that's so true. As the saying goes, the play is the thing. Ah, yes. <laughs> The play's the thing. Did you hear that, Fenton? I certainly did, Dean. Then set the scene for that thing we call a play. <laughs> Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, but the, ooh, they're best for you, player. <laughs> Present Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis, and Ann Baxter in a drama about the undying love of a woman for a man. A pitiful tale of a girl who is torn between her love for a struggling young inventor and the attentions of a wealthy sneak who tries to win her love by giving her furs. Entitled... The Mink Fink. Love you, Eli. Love you, you crazy mixed-up inventor. You stop with those test tubes and look at me. Some other time, Naomi. I'm busy putting the finishing touches on my new discovery, the latest improvement in sticks of dynamite. What do you mean, latest improvement in in dynamite sticks? They're peppermint flavored. <laughs> <laughs> They're utterly delicious. Oh, it's so smoky in here. I can't see who just came in. It is I, the Mink Fink. <laughs> Naomi, I brought you a new fur coat I've never seen green fur before What's it made of? Fuzzy money <laughs> Oh, Naomi, I have so much to give you And still you keep refusing my sneaky offers of marriage Why, why, why? Who wants to have a bunch of little finks running around? <laughs> oh, 
Naomi, 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 dear one, marry me and you'll have chinchillas and hermans. Marry me, Naomi, and you'll have children just like everybody else. <laughs> Eli, darling. What is it, <laughs> Eli, darling. If I do marry you, we can't live in this cellar. It's so dirty, so so filthy. How could you expect Naomi to live in this horrible place? There's no carpeting. There's nothing but just plain dirt. True. But it's wall-to-wall dirt. <laughs> What do you say, Naomi? <laughs> oh, I, I couldn't live here, darling. It's so damp. I know. This morning I picked up a newspaper to swat a fly and knock down a halibut. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi, if you marry me, you will share my huge estate. And remember, I have my own 18-hole golf course. Oh, lots of people have their own 18-hole golf courses. Inside the house? <laughs> Fink, you're just trying to turn her head. You're despicable, incorrigible, diabolical. Those are hard words. I know, but I said them. <laughs> I'd marry you at once, Eli, if you gave up your silly work. I could never give it up. Never. Do you understand? Never, never, never. Any V-E-R. Never. <laughs> After all, I am known in the profession as marvelous Eli, the mad inventor. But your inventors never made a nickel. Why do you think I'm so mad? <laughs> I'm crazy. Oh, no, Fink is right, Eli. Look at the crazy things you've invented. Crazy? Crazy? Whoa! <laughs> you call my invention of the poopsicle crazy? <laughs> Wait a minute. What's a poopsicle? That's a popsicle without any stick to hold it up. <laughs> it's a darb, a positive darb. <laughs> You made tears roll down her cheeks, you viper. I ain't got a handkerchief. Viper yourself. <laughs> don't cry, Naomi. Don't cry. Oh. Eat, Dad. Don't cry. I can't help it. If you really love me, Eli, you get up early someday and invent something practical. But I did! <laughs> Only this morning I perfected something to write with that's guaranteed not to leak. What is it? <laughs> and don't leave me out of this show. <laughs> what is it? I call it a pencil. <laughs> did you name it a pencil? What else does it look like? <laughs> but Eli, my darling, this is the age of automobiles. There are tremendous opportunities for inventions in that field. Naomi, <laughs> you have just said the secret word. I happen to have invented a windshield for cars that is crack-proof, crash-proof, and bulletproof. It's perfect except for one minor detail. What's that? You can't see through it. <laughs> I can only whip that one thing. <laughs> darling, darling, I want to be proud of you. Invent something worthwhile and I'll marry you. You mean you want me to invent something right in front of you? Yes. How about a liquid nail polish for people with liquid nails? <laughs> no. No, indeed. <laughs> I've got it. Why don't you get rid of it? <laughs> All right. Hand me my satchel of chemicals. Here you are, Eli. Now I start. Bichloride of potassium. Bipotassium of chloride. Oreothiamia chlorosilurate. You don't have any oreothiamia chlorosilurate. Then we'll use chicken fat. <laughs> now what's this? Look, it's beginning to bubble and boil. There. Now it's finished. What is it, Eli? What is it? <laughs> For years, medical science has been trying to help those poor unfortunates who suffer with the seven-year itch. And this formula is the answer. You mean it cures a seven-year itch? No, but it grows an extra pair of hands so you can scratch. 